Hello, my name is Marcus Lowe. I will be presenting the training on the Noel and Labors module. Uh, to begin with, I will review the basic features of the simulator. So Noel has the active eyes, both oral and nasal intubation, and bilateral carotid pulses. So moving on down, Noel has auscultation sites for the heart and lung sounds. There are also sites for external three-lead EKG and anterior defibrillation sites. Noel also comes standard with brachial and radial bilateral pulses. You can also auscultate carotid cough sounds using a real blood pressure cuff. And a real OSEP monitor can be used on the left index finger. Of course, the main feature of the Noel system is the ability to deliver a baby. We accomplish this by using two motors. One for translational motion, which sends the baby toward the birth canal, and the other for rotational motion showing the cardinal movements. To fill the urinary bladder in the abdominal cover, you can use the fill tube and syringe provided. The fill port opening is located on the underside of the cover. The connector pushes on and locks with the quarter turned to the right. Using the same fill tube, you can also fill the postpartum hemorrhage kit located in the right leg. The fill port is underneath the right knee and attaches in the same way as you did with the abdominal cover. Before attempting any delivery with the Noel system, you must make sure that both the birth canal and the baby are fully lubricated. We spray the front, the rear, and the inside of the birth canal with the lubricant provided. Next, we lubricate the baby's head and shoulders and rub it around. We are now ready to insert the baby for delivery. Before we insert the baby onto the mechanism, we must attach the placenta and the umbilical cord. The placenta can be attached to either side of the lower torso via a Velcro strap. Turn the baby over and you will notice two openings. These match up to the two pegs on the motor mechanism. Insert the head down into the birth canal, align the pins to the holes, and push up. The baby is now attached. A feature of the software that is unique to Noel is the uterine activity and fetal heart rate controls on the details page. First we click on the details tab of the software, and then we click on the UA slash FHR page. This brings up the window where you can control the uterine activity and the fetal heart rate. Firstly, the uterine activity. Starting from left to right at the top, the first box of parameters is called contraction frequency. You can set this by dialing in a numeric value or using a slide bar to the left of the box. The allowable range is from one minute to eight minutes. The next box over is the contraction duration. This can also be set with a numeric value or using the slide bar to the left. The limits for the contraction duration are 10 seconds to 90 seconds. Moving over to the right, we have our tocolytic instructions. We can choose from no contractions and mild, moderate, or strong if you are using an external TOCO monitor. Or you can set a specific value in millimeters of mercury if you're using an IUPC. We will also need to set a resting tone for the uterus 
which is the muscle tone of the uterus when it is not contracting. A normal value is around 8 to 10 millimeters of mercury. The limits of this are between 5 and 25 millimeters of mercury. Under certain situations, it may be necessary to show a coupling of the contractions. You must set the percentage probability that coupling will occur, and then you must set the percentage size of the original contraction that the coupling will be. If you set zero or leave the box blank, no coupling will occur. For the fetal heart rate controls, you must first set a fetal heart rate baseline, which is the first box on the left. Again, we can use a slide control at the side or set in a numeric value. Somewhere around 135 is a normal value. Moving over to the right, we have our first drop down box. And here you must set the variability, such as minimal or moderate. Further over to the right, we have our acceleration and deceleration intensity. They will be a choice of subtle, average, or dramatic. Going down to the lower level of boxes, our first one on the left is episodic changes where you will enter things such as reactive and non-reactive. Next we have periodic changes. Things such as early and late D cells are entered in this location. And finally, we have variable changes. Here we can set mild, moderate or severe variables. Once we apply all of the changes we have made here, you will see the changes reflected on the fetal strip. Now we want to load a preset labor. We do this by clicking on the labor tab and next click on the large blue icon that says load labor in the upper left. A window displaying mother's names will appear on the left hand side. Choose one of the mother's names Click on it, then click load. The labor will now load onto the labor tab screen. After the labor has loaded onto the labor tab window, you may start the scenario by pressing run. You will notice that the red bar on the left hand side of the screen turns green and begins to move to the right. As the baby delivers, it may be necessary to reduce the cervix a little. Once we complete the delivery cycle, the motor mechanism releases the baby and then it's up to the provider to deliver the baby the rest of the way. During a dystocia emergency, as the baby becomes stuck, the head will inch forward with each contraction. Then as the contraction subsides, the baby will inch back towards the perineum, thus displaying the classic turtle sign. The head begins to inch forward as the contraction peaks. As the contraction subsides, we see it inching back towards the perineum. When the force window appears upon the screen, you will notice that the force readings appear green, yellow, or red. 
The green color means that the force is within the nominal range. Yellow means you are in danger of possibly causing an injury to the child. And red means you are highly likely to cause damage to the child. Please click over to the labor tab. When the labor tab opens, you should see two large blue buttons in the top left. One says save labor, which I will skip for now. And the next says load labor. If you click load labor, a new window will appear showing you the preset scenarios. You may choose any one of these scenarios to load a preset labor. Please press cancel. Moving over to the right, you will see a box labeled time information. Here you will set the duration of the labor, which can be anywhere from 5 minutes up to 120 minutes. For demonstration purposes, we will select 30 minutes. The other side of the hash mark shows a box labeled warp factor. A warp factor of 1 means that the scenario will take approximately 30 minutes to run a 30 minute labor. If we click the two arrows to the side, you'll notice that you toggle between 6 and 1 in the warp factor window. If I go up to 6, that means that the scenario will run 6 times faster then the 30 minute scenario will complete in approximately 5 minutes. You may also use the warp factor as a fast forward during a scenario. And you may toggle between speeds at any time during the labor. To the right of that box, you will see a picture of the baby's head. And if you click the four dials, in the four corners of that box, you'll notice the baby's head changes position. This is how you tell the software how you align the baby when you set it inside the mannequin. The next box down is called labor control. Labor control has four functions in it. The obvious ones are pause, run, and reset. This is where you control the actual movement of the motor. Run begins the motor moving. Pause stops the motor moving wherever it is along the scenario path. And reset sends the motor back to the beginning position. The other two controls in this box are labeled Enable Smart Labor. There is a time duration and there is a question mark. If you click on the question mark, it will tell you that all non-speech pallets will run in real time for 10 seconds no matter what you have the warp factor set on. It is possible to change this time window just by clicking the up down arrows to the right of the 10 seconds. The checkbox on the left turns the smart labor on or off. The box below that is labeled only descend during contractions. If this box is not checked, the motor will continually run down towards the birth canal following the path set on the descent curve. If you check this box, the motor will only descend when there is a contraction. Thus the baby does not move towards the birth canal when no contractions are occurring. The next box is your dystocia control. As you can see, you can turn dystocia control on or off, and you can set a station of where you wish the dystocia to occur. The higher the station number, the further out the baby's head will be when the dystocia turns on. The next box is entitled contraction response. There are two possible responses to contractions. One is a speech response, whereby Noel will react to a contraction with speech palettes. 
if you select both speech and vitals, there will be a speech palate response and an increase in the breathing rate and the heart rate during each contraction. The checkbox turns this contraction response on or off. The final box at the top of the window is entitled Delivery Position. Here you have four controls. If the breech control box is checked, the rotational motor will be disabled during delivery and the baby will just be pushed out in whichever orientation it was facing. The check ROT-LOT at delivery checks that the baby's head is transverse at delivery. If this is not the case, the baby will not deliver. If you do not check the ROT-LOT delivery box, the baby will deliver no matter which way the shoulders are facing. The next section we have is the actual descent curve. The numbers on the right and left go from negative 5 to plus 15. These are measurements in centimeters in relation to the ischial spine. We'll take the descent curve far left black dot and slide up and down. This is your starting position for your labor. If you right click on the black line, you can add a point. If you slide this point up and down and left and right, you will see that it cannot move outside the parameters of the two neighboring points. You will also notice as you move this point up and down, the phases of labor will change based on the position of that point. You can add up to 10 points on this curve and shape the delivery curve however you wish for the particular labor that you are simulating. If you right click on a point, you can remove that point. If your final point on the right hand side is above station four, when the delivery motor gets to the end of the cycle, the software will ask you if you wish to deliver the baby or not. If that point is below station four, when the delivery motor reaches the end of the cycle, it will continue to deliver the baby anyway. The numbers on the bottom of the graph represent the time in minutes of your labor scenario. Below the bottom scale is a solid black line. To the left of that line is a blue box that says clear. If you right click on this line, you can add a pallet item. A new window opens whereby you can select a pallet item to place on the line. It can be a pre-saved pallet item, such as Candice 5, or it may be a speech item uh, in English or Spanish, which could be the baby is coming. There is also a transition time that you can set for these pallets. The transition time will be the time it takes for the pallet to be applied during this scenario. Once you have added the pallet to the line, you will notice a point on that line. It will be green, yellow, pink or blue or if it's a speech item, it will be orange. The pink, green, and yellow icons designate whether the pallet is considered to be a healthy, critical, or care required item. If you left click on the pallet, you can slide it left and right along the line. You can add up to 18 points along this line. If you double click the pallet, 
a window will appear that shows you the properties of that palette. It will look much like the status window. Also, if you right click, you can remove the palette item or choose to edit the palette. If you choose to edit the palette, a new window will appear. After you have edited your palette, you will be asked whether you wish to change the palette in the palette window or just for this particular scenario. On the far right of the labor window at the bottom is the release baby button. This can be pressed at any time by the instructor to release the baby from the birthing mechanism. When you are satisfied with all the changes that you have made to the labor screen, you may now save your labor. This is done by clicking save labor on the top left. A new window will appear. In this window, on the left hand side, you enter information regarding the mother to be, including age, height, weight, weight gain. You can also fill out the OB history of the mother. Uh, you can put in the you can put in the gestational age of the fetus, the gravida and para, whether or not she has had any abortions, whether or not she's had any prenatal care, and if you wish to add complications to your scenario and have the mum be diabetic or allergic or any of those, you can add them in as well. On the right hand side, there is a box entitled stage information. Here you can put in notes for each of the stages of labor for other instructors to use and understand what is going on in your scenario. At the bottom of this box you can also add in your postpartum scenarios to be linked to the birthing scenario. If you select one of these as soon as the baby is delivered, the software will switch over to the scenario screen and begin running your postpartum scenario. Uh, another word about your load labor scenario screen. When you bring up this window, you will notice that the maternal names are alphabetized. The A names are normal labors, and as you progress down the list, they become more complicated. For example, the C name of Candice is a shoulder dystocia. The E name of Eleanor is a preeclampsia scenario, which also features seizures. And as you go down the list, things become more intense with AFE and preterm labor scenarios. When you attach the baby to the birthing mechanism, note the initial position of the head. In this case, we have the baby set at ROA. Then, before you run the actual delivery, you must ensure you have the matching ROA checked on the software. Your Noel simulator comes with two abdominal covers, the first of which, the contracting cover, we used already during the labor scenario. The second cover is the C-section cover, and we use this for postpartum hemorrhage and Leopold maneuvers. To perform Leopold maneuvers, we must first insert the inflation pillow. Slide the top end underneath the attachment mechanism. Position the baby on top of the pillow however you wish. Then using the hand pump provided, inflate the pillow to raise the baby. Next, Place the C-section abdominal cover in position.
You are now ready to begin your palpation maneuvers. Now let us demonstrate how to set up for a postpartum hemorrhage scenario. Before beginning, ensure that you have put fluid into the leg. Set the raising block in place. Next, take the postpartum 48 hour uterus. Set this in place. Attach the tubing to the air feed. Attach the abdominal cover. Once you have all of that set up, you can now start the bleeding and set a uterine pressure on the software. Then you are ready to begin fundal massage exercises. To turn on the postpartum hemorrhage bleeding, you must turn to the details page and on the bottom right under other, you will see a Boolean switch for hemorrhage and a box for uterine pressure. The uterine pressure can be filled by entering a number as a percentage or using the slide rule on the left hand side. For this example, let's say 10%. At 10%, the uterus will be very boggy and we can turn on the hemorrhaging by clicking the Boolean switch, turning it a light blue color. We then hit apply now to start the bleeding and set the uterine pressure. After a fundal massage has occurred and the uterus has firmed up, you may turn off the bleeding by switch switching the hemorrhage boolean switch to dark blue. You can apply this immediately if you wish, or you can trend the uterine pressure up to a higher number to make it firmer or you can release the air altogether so that you can palpate the built-in hard fundus of the 48-hour postpartum uterus.